Hello and welcome to AM, the show that's all about music. Now we're going to hand straight over to Jamie, who's going to tell us all about the latest music awards. Music awards happen every year to show appreciation for the world's best and most popular music. Many different music awards happen each year, whether it be for a different genre or for a different charity. For example, we have the Billboards, the MTV Music Awards, the Grammys, the Mobos, and of course the Brits. Different music awards highlight different artists and different types of music genres. The Mobo Awards, for example, stands for Music Awards of Black Origin. They have more recently been known to focus on the UK's grime scene, showing artists such as Stormzy, whereas the Grammys are the most popular music award events and focus on the charts and mainstream artists. A lot of music awards come into contest with each other to gain more publicity. Music awards are often held to raise money for charities and to host the event the following year. Some recent winners of music awards are often at more than one type of music award, such as Rihanna will appear at the Mobos and the Grammys, along with most of the others as well. Stormzy, an English grime artist, has more recently become very popular both on the grime scene and music in general. After, review, after receiving over 8 million views on his more recent video, Shut Up, a new story was made on Channel 4 about the artist. After receiving the 2014 Best Grime Act Award at the Mobos last year, he has now been nominated, nominated for three awards this year also. Music awards are not only a good thing for artists, but give fans a chance to go and watch their favourite to get their awards. Performances are a must at each music award to give them more attention and publicity for the following years to come. Each year, they want to raise more money to make the awards better and different. At the Brits this year, Kanye West performed his 2015 hit single, All Day, along with a lot of backing dancers, including South London, um, London star Stormzy. A lot of drama does also go along with music awards, though, as there is obviously a competition between artists. For example, when Kanye thought Beyonce which should have won the award instead of Taylor Swift and announced it to everyone back in the 2010 VMAs. Stay tuned, because after the break we have an exclusive inter interview for you. The edges are flat to create a harder surface, making it harder to be damaged if dropped. The iOS 8 feature on the 5S comes with Siri, the voice of your iPhone. Siri is only available when you have a network connection and has weather intelligence and your own chosen voice. The new Touch ID feature brought to the iPhone 5S enables you to unlock your phone using your fingerprint and with the new iOS 8 update even allows you to purchase songs and apps using your fingerprint. It's the, per it's the perfect password as it's always with you and can't be guessed. With the ID technology, the more you use your fingerprint, the faster it becomes to recognise. The iPhone 5S allows you to add a multiple print fingerprint. Apple have introduced new, already installed apps to the iPhone 5S, such as the new Health app, which allows you to track and record your fitness plans and show you your daily intake of calories. This allows you to store all the info you need with just the touch of a button. Call Sonny Arlott. Middle one. <laughs> so today we have Jake Clark on the show with us. Jake's played all over the place with his band, To Burn and Blossom, and rapidly they were making their way up the charts. They were a part of the rock scene, and they'll surely have you all interested. Jake's only 17 years old, but he knows what he's talking about, and the interesting change on in the rock grunge scene will have you all in shivers. So let's begin. Um, 
So Jake, let's begin with the basis for our audience. What were the names of your band members? Um, it was myself, George Bucket on drums, Jake Burford on guitar, and uh, Josh Clapham on vocals. So did you, how did you all meet? Did you know each other? Um, me and George knew each other for a very long time. Um, we started off as a band together uh, about a year prior to that. And then George met Josh through friends in Reading, and then we met Jake eventually through Josh. So you, you all similar ladies? Um, Josh and Jake were a few years older than us, um, and me and George are the same age, so. Oh, wonderful. Um, and how did you come up with the name for your band, The Diner Blossom? Um, George came up with the name. It was uh, in a song uh, to do with, it was a trash talk song with Tyler the Creator, or a rapper that he was interested in. Um, and it was, it was something to do with Burn and Blossom, and he, he just sort of came up with, with it from that, and um, just thought it sounded quite fitting, quite cool. So, so do you all have similar interest in, in the same sort of artists, same bands? Um, no, we've all got a real range of artists, I mean, that we like. So Josh is really into sort of hardcore music. Um, I'm into more metal and uh, old school sort of rock music. Paul's <coughs> likes anything from metal to rap, and, you know, and Jake was really into the sort of um, metal rock sort of music as well. So it was a real um, eclectic style that we had. So. so personally, how would you describe your style of music? Um, I think it sort of came out as, not really intending it to be, but it really came out as sort of hardcore punk uh, kind of music. Uh, bands like Black Flag. Uh, it wasn't really a plan to sound anything like that, it was just how it turned out. That's good. Um, and how long, was your, how long was your band together for? Um, we were together for about the most part of a year. Um, so it wasn't long, but in that time we did, uh, we did, a lot. We did quite a bit. Yeah, you did really well. For what it was. Um, and so, did you have any long-term plans that you that you could see for the future? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, while things were going well for us, we were, you know had a plan of we could take this wherever um, to festivals, do bookings for tours. I guess that was the that was the dream, and uh, obviously it didn't quite materialise as we thought it would. But to do what sort of festivals are you hoping to to, to oh. play at? Well, um, it was anything we could get our hands on, really. We weren't really picking on, oh, we want to go and headline a you know, Reading Festival somewhere because obviously the chance of that happening is, is next to none. But, um, I mean, working with people we, we'd met, and um, there's a lot of small indoor festivals um, around the country, uh, Red Fest, um, you know, places like Heavy Fest as well, um, that we were interested in. There were similar artists playing and, and people that we knew as well that we'd met. Come on. Okay. Um, did you record any songs in the, in the time that you managed to play for in that year? Uh, and did you have any plans in the near future to record any more? We did. Uh, we recorded some demos. We did it for free um, at uh, Reading College. Uh, it was a student that, w that we knew who wanted to record some music for his work, um, for his college work, and we thought, well, this is a perfect opportunity to get something done for free, helping out someone else and helping ourselves out. So we recorded um, two demos. One was absolutely finished and ready and sounded really good. Uh, and the other one, we got all the instruments down and the vocals um, didn't quite come through due to something to do with, their, uh, with the guy who was recording it. But, um, you know, we had the demos ready. We had a lot of songs written, uh, ready to potentially record an EP or, or you know, a, a digital album or something. So you work well as a group? Like, any disagreements along the way? Any big disagreements? I think... When it came to writing, we did it in a bit of a strange way. We all had our own place. We all had, you know, I would write the guitars and the bass for it. George would write the drums. And Josh would write the vocals. And Jake would, you know, participate in the, in the guitars as well. Um, but there wasn't really disagreements in the writing. It was more the sort of style we were going for. Mm. Uh, and, yeah, it was, it was difficult, uh, especially we were... Josh and Jake were living out of Henley, um, you know, so it, diff it was difficult to, to come to agreements on, on where we would play, when we would play, when we'd rehearse. I think it was that sort of, that was the problem, really. And for you, who would you say your idols are in the music world? Oh, um, I mean, like I said before, I'm really into the sort of old classic rock, um, heavy metal music, so Motley Crue are my, are my, my mm, number one. Of course, yes. <laughs> really, really go, you know, uh, even though it's a completely different style of music we were playing, I really put a lot of, um, especially on my bass work, um, a lot of their writing style into it. And 
you know, it's a song's a song, but it's just the way you, uh, the way you compose it together. Uh, I think what we'd all really like to know, what I'd like to know is, uh, if you could meet any famous musicians, who would it be and why? Um, again, like I said, Motley Crue, I mean, I, I absolutely adore Nicky Six and uh, just been so I followed forever. Um, you know, I'd really like, there's, it'd be nice if I could sit down with him and ask him questions, mm. I could be there for, for days and days asking. Ever met him? No. <laughs> Love to meet him though, yeah. Love to meet him. Um, and when did your passion for music start? A uh, very young age, uh, learning a lot from my dad. My dad was in a band before and worked in the industry and uh, sort of seeing videos and hearing his music and stuff really got me interested and I guess I must have been early primary school, I got a guitar, started guitar Started lessons, young then, yeah. Started guitar lessons, didn't quite get on with the lessons and then eventually picked it all up myself, mm. got myself a bass uh, at early secondary school. And then that sort of uh, evolved into a band. Playing other instruments or just guitar? Uh, guitar, bass, sing a little bit, dabble on drums a bit. Yeah, I mean, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. Do a bit of bit, bit of, of everything really. Yeah. yeah well, it was really nice to have you uh, and have your time. Um, and we can't wait to hear uh, all of your songs. Thank okay. you very much. Great. Is this you? Or is this you? Sims 4, Play With Life. The Sims 4, Premium Edition. Now only $49.99 in that game. Hiya! Um, music is one of the main aspects within our society that is constantly changing to suit our forever changing society. For example, you know, you've got the way we actually hold and have music, from vinyl to now on our, you know, mobile phones. Children will never understand the pain that we had to go through carrying like hundreds of CDs around. So here with me now is Ollie to discuss Hello. Um, <laughs> the change in music. So there's been a vast amount of changes within music and the industry from the type to the subject in music. Mm. So, you know, you've got kind of loads of different kind of aspects of music now. So uh, one of the main things that is always seen is the fact that music is now about sex, not yeah. love, none of that. And so it's, it has become a big thing. It has become quite a huge, huge thing mm. now. And that people are now seen as sexual objects and that sex is how you get love and mm -hmm. stuff like that. It has become very objectifying, I would say. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> no, it, it isn't good in that sense. I mean, when it comes to certain artists, um, their whole song is usually revolves around sex and their music video tends to have a lot of um, scandally dressed women in it. Yeah. Yeah, which mm -hmm. has become a big thing. But that takes away, I feel that takes away from the song uh, and that just leaves you with the that kind sort of aftermath that kind sexist, of it's just yeah. you've kind of got that way of mind now mm. and I think that's kind of corrupting certain like it aspects is. in society and stuff yeah. um, statistics show that actually music over the last 60 years has become more and more energetic I guess you can see that through the vast amounts of like music from DJ Fresh and the Beatles mm -hmm. there's quite a big contrast there I think big contrast huge like I think the Beatles were creating their own music through instruments and stuff. Whilst DJ Fresh is doing that, it's more computer animated. Yeah. In a sense, and you can hear that, and people now kind of that's 
the yeah. norm. I mean, no. with songs back then, the music, the song, the lyrics would really get to your heart. They touch you. That's that's the point of the lyrics. They, you you could relate to them, and that's why you love that band so much. You'd have a connection with them. Yeah. But now, music is is about the beats, beats and parting. And the, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, and how you can a, dance to something and how you can kind of yeah, feel it's about going out, having rather. a good time rather than relating to it, yeah. which I feel is kind of a step back in a way, actually. Yeah, no, it's not good, and now you can't particularly... There are some songs out there, and there are some artists that do produce some very emotional... For example, Ed Sheeran, yeah. Yeah, Ed Sheeran, Jake Bug. Exactly. They have some very emotive pieces of music. Which I thought everybody can relate to in one yeah, way or another. You don't have to take the, the words word for word. Maybe. Yeah, but it's kind of yeah. slightly lost now exactly. in translation. You know, again, like I was saying, that, you know, according to statistics, music is now more kind of it's created by technology it's not created by instruments and you know it's not kind of more traditional anymore you know you do have some artists like Ed Sheeran that do use guitars and stuff and but then then again they add they add the beat the they add the yeah, more exactly. technology it's not, to natural, it, which it's not so natural anymore and then when you hear um something that's been produced and made in a studio and then you hear them live there's there's, there's such, a, such a difference can be said there can be, be a letdown yeah it points. can be a real letdown actually and then you sort of it seems fake in a way like you yeah, don't like understand the lifestyle seems fake i believe so what you've been kind of listening to isn't what you're actually experiencing so yeah, yeah and it's it's a shame really but at the same time that's how it's moved on and it does produce great music it is yeah and that's not what we're trying to like old music is great and so is new new music yeah. But it all kind of yeah. There's there's no doubt that the quality of sound and the pitch is, is almost well, pitch perfect now, isn't yeah, it? Like yeah, you yeah, yeah. Audio tune and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, but it's it's really really changed. Yeah, and it's drastically. Um, music has become such an influence within our society. You know that can be for fashion, appearance, sex, and overall can be about av advertising. And I think that's become an important part. You know, young girls see their favourite singer or in their music videos dressing pr provocatively mm. and they now want to be like that. So it's constantly changing how we live and how we see ourselves and how we see we should be. I think that's quite an important part of society and how we've kind of masked music into yeah. that. I mean, whether you realise it or not, it's become a sort of subconscious um, thought. When you see a music video and you hear a song, those, those lyrics have an effect on you and they may affect the way you treat some other person, yeah. or view another person. Or treat yourself. Exactly. Yeah. You know, like, you now kind of, I know from my personal experience and other people's, that actually, you know, you kind of, you look at yourself in the mirror like, I'm not slim enough as this person, I don't look like this person. And exactly, yeah. And you start to judge yourself, whereas before, it would just be about the music. It would be about that kind of, the, just connecting with that and enjoying it, whereas now, it's so many different aspects, and you have like, you know, like Miley Cyrus's uh, Beats video, um, and yeah, no, it's it's drastic, mm. really, the change. Um, sex has ultimately become such a big part of society, and it displays within music. So you have artists such as Whitney Houston and Frank Sinatra that talked about love and everything like that, and now you have tracks such as Anaconda by Nicki Minaj that talks about sex mm, and that music is just galaxy. it's, it's not, awful, it's it? not yeah. great especially her in those shorts mm, that does not it's look not, good it's not great at all but yeah thanks for watching and thanks for the chat Ollie perfectly welcome <laughs> alright Anytime, anywhere, Starbucks.
A new wave of music production is sweeping the nation. Gone are the days where expensive studio equipment would limit people from trying new things. But now with this, a MIDI keyboard controller, it allows people to try new styles of music and become small artists themselves in this digital age. I learned of a technique called Rhythm Roulette, where you pick out three records at random from a shop and try and create music with them. And what you're about to see is my attempt. Well, we just got back from the charity shop and we've got these two records here. Now this first one, um, Evie, come on, ring those bells. No idea. No idea. Um, it seems to be all just like Christmas carols. I don't know if there's going to be any heat on have you any room for Jesus or, you know, some children see him. But, you know, you never know. And this one is the one I'm most excited about. Apparently it means German flutes or something, maybe there'll be some pan pipes, something cool on here that we can use, I can't read any of that, it's all in German, so let's chop these up and see what we can find. This is alright, you know, it's not so terrible. I expected something a bit more dry. I expected something a bit, yeah, I expected something a bit more dry. This has actually got some nice relaxing heat on it. I like this. That's a sick beat. That's a sick beat. That is not bad. My youth that one. One side done. It wasn't actually as bad as I thought it was going to be. There's actually some decent stuff on there. I don't know if I'll use it once I listen to the flute thing. But if there's nothing on the flute thing, then this might be actually this. There might actually be something good on here. Really 
this. This is definitely being used. Um, uh, we found some nice chimes on the Eve's Come On Ring Those Bells album. There's a lot more on here than I actually thought that there was going to be. Um, so that's good. Now we're just going to take a sample. Um, so we're going to run the signal from there through the wire into Audacity. Um, and hopefully that means that we should get a nice clear, um, nice little signal thing going on. So There's so much, because the record is really scratched up, so there is so much crackling going on that I think it might be messing with the actual um, recording. Right. You just saw, I failed massively. However, after recording was finished, I went back a few days later and made something decent, which you'll actually get to hear later in the show.
perhaps one of 2011's unanticipated success stories. A riotous survival horror RPG with gratuitous amounts of gore and violence have seen it sell over 5 million copies worldwide, becoming te developer Techland's best-selling game to date. Following its somewhat surprising sales figures and reviews, a sequel was announced with an anticipated release for 2016. And as you just saw, music plays a really heavy part in this video. It features the bomb by Pigeon John. And one of the most immediate things we notice is the normality of the sound. It merely seems like a runner's track, which is corresponding with the action we're seeing. It's not a sweeping dramatic piece reminiscent of Skyrim, nor is it an 8-bit sound that we'd associate with Space Invaders or Pac-Man. It, ultimately, there is no suggestion that the person we are seeing is going to soon become embroiled in the zombie apocalypse. And although it may not be immediately obvious, there is a great deal of cutting to the beat. The light jingling at the start when he's stretching, for example, is in time with the jogger stretching. It reflects his gentle movements and is hinting at a build-up for something bigger and far more serious. Likewise, the sound corresponds with his seemingly arrogant manner. The singer is confident, and the lyrics appear to be somewhat cocky, just how the character is being presented to us. As the trailer goes on, and we see the population of Los Angeles rather humorously being transformed into zombies, the song could be less associated with other workout songs and more of a contrapuntal soundtrack to the blood-drenched ac action. Now, one of the more profound and clever elements is how the wording corresponds with what we're seeing. For example, the opening line references a clear blue sky, and what we see in the background is a clear blue sky. And alongside a number of smaller inclusions is perhaps the part where this is used to the best effect. When he says, I'm the bomb and about to blow up, we do, in fact, see a building blow up. These technicalities aside, it helps show, up, show Dead Island as what it is, a fun, gory game, which has the potential to revitalise an increasingly stale genre. It isn't afraid to break away from the trends set by many of its counterparts, and there are no foreboding, ominous and dramatic songs accompanying the slaying of dragons, for example, nor is there a rock song playing behind the advert for the latest FPS. Dead Island 2 is set to embrace what gaming is all about, enjoyment. So, keep talking, keep talking about it. Okay, so Dead Island 2, when it comes out, I'm sure will feature another really strong soundtrack. But bearing in mind what we've seen from this one, we, I think it's going to have a far more serious focus on the noise yeah, and the sound. Really 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 so we're going over to... <laughs>
show that's all about music. Hopefully we'll see you again for the next episode and thank you for watching.